All right, welcome to your .LA weekly recap of the hottest news in the LA tech media and startup scene. I'm Kelly O'Grady, .LA's chief host and correspondent. I'm going to take you through the top five headlines from the week so you have everything you need to know to stay smart on the space. Okay, so let's jump in. TikTok is topping our news again this week, but this time it's not the ban of the app, it's the influencers using the app. So according to our own Sam Blake, with new platforms like TikTok changing the social media game, influencers have to be able to succeed across a multitude of platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, or whatever the next sensation is gonna be. But if they can, stars can often find a window into more traditional forms of media like streaming or reality TV as the recent wheelhouse deal to profile the TikTok hype house as it's known proves. Now, while social media fame can be very lucrative, it doesn't provide that same amount of legitimacy that more traditional outlets offer. But on the flip side, you have more traditional companies wanting to grow their followings on these social platforms, and they often use creators to do so. So it's a complicated ecosystem where social media and traditional media are beginning to blur. Okay, next up, if you're looking for something to do this holiday weekend, Mulan is bucking its traditional theater release and instead is heading to Disney+. Plus. Now this is a significant move for Disney and the industry at large to test out a different distribution model amidst the pandemic. Now, I used to work as an analyst at Disney on their direct-to-consumer efforts, and there are a lot of factors at play here. So the revenue-sharing economics are far better on the streaming service, but a lower potential reach may hurt how Disney monetizes its franchise across its different business units. That being said, the loss may be offset by direct access to consumer data that will allow Disney to have a more sophisticated understanding of its customers. So depending on how all of these factors play out, this could have groundbreaking implications for the film industry's future. Now, I put together a little analysis on this, so if you want to check it out, check out the link below. And now I'll give you an update on how the Uber and Lyft saga has been playing out. So these two rideshare giants have been embroiled in a battle in California to keep drivers classified as independent contractors rather than employees. Now our own Francesca Billington reports that two Texas-based rideshare companies by the names of Alto and Arcade are actually coming to LA to take advantage of this turmoil. So these disruptors operated different employee models and would be exempt from classifying their drivers as employees under Proposition 22. And when you talk to drivers in LA, honestly, they welcome these new services because because they don't have loyalty to just one company. But with Los Angeles being in one of the big two's top five cities, it could be a huge blow for Uber and Lyft. Next up, let's check out what's going on in the cannabis industry. So Ease is running a social equity partners program, which aims to boost underrepresented founders of cannabis startups with wraparound financial and operational support. And now it's expanding that program to Los Angeles, where it will feature local cannabis brand products owned by people of color. Dreamt and Blackstar Farms are two local businesses that will now have their products on the app. And Ease's platform has handled over 6 million deliveries and boasts over 600,000 users, which makes it a really large platform for these smaller companies to gain exposure. For more on this from Tammy Abdullah, check out the link below. And to round out our top five, new mobile app OK Play serves as another in a recent blitz of edutainment products for children. But the twist, Rachel Ranga reports, is that this one is also made for parents. So OK Play asks them to put their phones down and play with their young children. The company has already raised 11 million and launched its signature product this week. And if that sounds like a lot of cash to you, you're right. OK Play founder said that he's actually creating a media company. So each day, parents will find a fresh batch of activities to engage with their kids. And while doing so, they're encouraged to create special moments so kids can record, for example, how they're feeling one day, angry or sad. So the goal is to get parents and kids interacting and through that grow their emotional and social skills. And to round it out, I did an interview with the co-founder and CEO of S'more, Adam Konaslati, on how the online dating app aims to create a anti-superficial dating experience. Sounds crazy, I know. So we covered everything from whether virtual dating is here to stay post-pandemic to the craziest celebrity dating story you will ever hear, I promise. Watch it at the link below. All right, that wraps up my weekly recap. For more on these stories, more news this week, and to hear about the awesome virtual events we're hosting, head to our website, sign up on our newsletter, and be sure to follow us on Instagram so you don't miss my exclusive video content. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kelly O'Grady for .LA.